got a tremendous sense of frustration with traditional media. Uh, I felt that editors were not paying enough attention to what social media was. Uh, I didn't think that they were really getting it. I, I battled for a long, long time internally to get a blog going. Uh, I feel your pain. Thank you. <laughs> and it, I burned a lot of uh, political capital trying to convince people to start blogs, to start with the first blog in the newspaper. I started the first blog in the International Herald Tribune. Uh, the, the, the problem that I faced was once I got it started, everything that happened, the conclusion of the newsroom was, okay, we need to start a blog. Which is like, no, you missed the point. That, you didn't really get it. Um, this was my experience within, within a traditional news media organization. I think traditional news media, media organizations, to defend them, have a tremendous problem. Social media really attacks directly what they do. Media used to have this fantastic model, a dual monopoly in fact, where if you had the capital to own a press or the license to own a broadcast uh, medium, a television or radio, then you, had an, uh, you, you could collect, often with newspapers, for example, it was a dual monopoly. You could charge people for the content, they could pay it by, by <coughs> subscription, or pay for the newsstand, and then you could charge advertisers money on the other side. With broadcast media, it was really just a one-way street, or actually with cable, you can get two ways. You can get subscription to cable, plus paying for the content uh, and, and for the advertising. Media itself, however, is now trying to adjust to this new world where they are not the sole influencer. Why is digital influence uh, uh, in Ogilvy PR? Why is it not in the different other sections of Ogilvy, which I am just coming to terms with. I just joined Ogilvy a few months ago. Uh, and when I joined, I found out that there was this thing called Ogilvy One. There's this thing called uh, a Neo. Neo, it turns out, deals with advertising. That's paid online content. Ogilvy One deals with the building of infrastructure. The specialty of what Ogilvy Digital Influence does is we are doing what PR companies used to do when the major influencers were journalists. Now the major influencers are no longer journalists. The major influencers are people gathered here tonight who produce content online that is visible to people around the world instantly using distribution mediums that cost very, very little. So what Ogilvy DI does is we leverage that now. So instead of talking to the five journalists that theoretically measure, matter, we spend our time trying to figure out who are the bloggers who matter for a particular client in a particular situation and start conversations with them. And that's it. That, you know, it, it, for some clients, digital is, is a great mystery. How do we do it? What's going on? And it's, it's something that I try to explain to people is it's no mystery. Social, social media. It's an exciting new world, but it's no mystery. How do you deal with social media? Well, you deal with social media in the same way that you would deal with a cocktail party. You don't walk into a cocktail party shouting to people, you know, buy my product, buy my product. With social media, you're dealing with human beings, you're dealing with human relations. And if you're a company dealing with social media, you need to find things of value that you can bring to that, converse, that ongoing conversation. And that's really what my role is right now, is helping companies to figure out what are the ways that they can bring things of value to influencers such as yourselves online. Um, I don't know what else I can say about that, but happy to kick off a conversation about that. If other people have thoughts on this or questions about <coughs> blogging or anything like that, I don't know what, what anybody has any comments, reactions.